And for the next three days, the Spa City is Title Town. We welcome you to Hot Springs Bank OZK Arena. It is the national anthem here, and we welcome you to what should be a fun next three days. Let's pause for just a second for the national anthem here at Bank OZK Arena. Should be a great three days, 12 fantastic games. Thanks for joining us this afternoon here on Arkansas PBS Sports. Kyle Deckelbaum with Robinson coach Amon Love. It's great to have the expertise of coaches over the next three days. We even made you put on a shirt. It's going to be a lot of fun here. Let's take a look at what's on tap. We're going to begin this afternoon with a rematch of a championship game from a year ago in the 4A girls. It's Nashville and Farmington. It's going to be a lot of fun. These two teams have been kind of on a collision course all year. They're going to tip things off for us here over the next few days. At about 145 today, it's going to be the 4A boys, Blyville, taking on Little Rock Christian. And tonight at 6 p.m., the 5A girls, Valonia and Greenwood. And we end day one, Pine Bluff taking on Lake Hamilton for the 5A boys title. You see Farmington getting set, Nashville getting set as well. We'll take a quick break, step aside, come back to break down what should be a great matchup when we come back. You are watching the Centennial State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. During the past year, we've been traversing the natural state with our cinematic drone from lakes and rivers, waterfalls, scenic byways, mountains, swamps, overlooks, and towering rock formations. This unique documentation of all four seasons from all four corners of the state with an aerial cinematic perspective will give you, the viewer, an Arkansas adventure like never before, exploring Arkansas from above. Download the PBS video app or watch online. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Set to tip things off here, the 4A championship game here in Arkansas PBS Sports. Kyle Deckelbaum and Amon Love with you. Let's take a look at the bracket here. First for the visiting team for Nashville, a team with only three losses this year. And here's how they got here. It's been blowout wins over uh, the bye initially, then over Gravit, and then a win over Gentry for Nashville. And you look at their roster, Amon, there's no Jenna Lawrence on this roster, but there are a couple really good scorers, Kylie Scoggins, and how about Lauren Carver, our player to watch? I, I, I definitely think she had a great game uh, in the semifinal game, and uh, it's leading up to something that could be a real good competitive game. Yeah, 17 points in that semifinal yeah. game. These two teams have been on a collision course all year. This is yeah. the first meeting since a year ago at this time. We can show you how the championship game ended. 3.3 seconds left, and Nashville hits a shot to win 42-41. So you know Farmington has been thinking about that, and they admitted it. You see that shot there, that improbable shot with three seconds left. 
And listen, there were some dark moments for this Farmington team, and you know they've been thinking about that for an entire year leading up to this game. Exactly. I mean, any coach would be, uh, especially when you have a team that they're preparing for next year, and they're preparing probably the next day for it. Uh, so they've been thinking about this for like a while. You see how Farmington got here. Farmington has a great player to watch in Jenna Lawrence, the future Razorback. Yes, Jenna Lawrence has been playing very well. Uh, she is a solid player, can, can, can pretty much do everything for you. Uh, so I expect to see good things out of her tonight. Well, Jenna Lawrence is fun to watch. This is a team with a lot of size in Farmington. We will be back with tip-off for the Centennial State Basketball Championships at Arkansas PBS Sports right after this. by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. There's well over 2,000 Arkansas rice farms. 96% of them are family owned and operated. It's all about building community. The results we've been seeing have been very promising. I grew up watching the farm, knowing every detail about it. If you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. It helps us to give back to the land and make sure that it's gonna be there for future generations. Every community has a story to tell, and if somebody will tell it, it'll be interesting. Here we go, tip off, game one of 12 here at Bank OZK Arena in the Spa City, the 2023 Centennial State Basketball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. It is great to have you along for the ride. Kyle Deckelbaum and Robinson coach Amon Love with you. And here comes Farmington, and the first thing that's going to stand out is their size. A couple 6'3 players, a six-footer off the bench. It's a Farmington team with a lot of size. And there is Jenna Lawrence, the future Razorback, getting things started here in Hot Springs. Yes, yes, yes. They handled that pressure very well and got a good pass off from the corner there. Jenna, Jenna Lawrence, Lawrence. 98 threes, 2,200 points. She is eight rebounds shy of 1,000 for her career. We will talk about her story. And there is Kylie Scott, last year's MVP in this game. As we mentioned, Nashville won last year on a three with 3.3 seconds left. That one off the side, rebound to Farmington. It's Olivia Dean coming the other way. The junior up court, and Nashville gets the turnover at the other end. Well, that was a good job getting back in transition. Lauren Carver gives it off. Scoggins of deep three off the back of the iron, off the top of the backboard. The big rebound from Jenna Lawrence. She is the top post player in the state, number 61 in the country, according to ESPN. Won a title previously at Melbourne, but the Farmington team that's played four straight finals, and there she is, a deep three. What a great shot, what a great shot, and with two, with, with two hands in her face, right? So she's, she's, she's coming out really ready to, ready to play this game. Farmington comes in having won 25 straight. Nashville comes in having won 24 straight. Three losses on the year. They're going to get a foul there, a push. Nashville 29 and 3. They scheduled tough them on. They've beaten Little Rock Christian, Jonesboro, Central, and Parkview. Their only losses are to teams playing here in Hot Springs, North Little Rock, Conway, and Greenwood, who they played pretty tough, and they get on the board. Yes, they finally get on the board, and here comes that pressure that they like they're known for. Farmington gets it across. It. Underneath, Bershears has it taken away. That's the nice sophomore, hands. the other big player. Nice hand drop. Carver three. on the drive, and she gets it to go. This is kind of what we're going to be looking at here for like that. Another turnover, Dean, the bounce pass underneath, and the lay-in by Caroline Dean, her sister. Mic check. Defense, 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 defense. 
Lawrence off the mark this time. London fights for the rebound. Instead, Dean comes away with it for Nashville. She'll push it the other way and lays it in at the other end. London gives it off. That one's out of bounds. Boy, Farmington looks a little out of sync right now. The Farmington team, 35 and one on the year. They have not lost to a team in the state. They lost to the top team in Kansas, playing back in a tournament over Christmas. So they have not lost since last year's championship game here in Hot Springs. Offensive rebound for Nashville. On the drive, Scoggins lays it in. That's, that's 10 straight for the Scrapperettes. Another turnover taken away from Lawrence. Here comes Scoggins. Can't convert. This is Reese Shiree, a junior. Inside. And Lawrence can't finish. Bashirs couldn't get the rebound. Nashville has it. Well, you mentioned one of the big keys to the game is rebounding, and Nashville so far has shown them on. They're not afraid to step in there. Yes, they are not. They are. They are not worried about that size. They're. They're. They're using their uh, leverage to come in and actually, boost, um, actually boot them out and get good rebounds and push the ball in transition. And that was another key was uh, the transition. Uh, first time out on the floor. How about the Scrapper X? 10 straight to take a 10-5 lead. You're watching the Centennial State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Such a thrill to do this. Let's start having some fun. You can do anything. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS Video app. Back in Hot Springs, a great crowd on hand today here at Bank OZK Arena. It's the 4A Championship game, one of 12 here in the Spa City. And this is a good one. Anybody, I think, who watches and knows 4A basketball knows these are the two teams that have been on a collision course ever since that state championship match a year ago that Nashville won. And this is their first meeting since then. It's a 10-5 Scrapperettes lead. A Scrapperettes team yeah. that takes long shots, gets long rebounds. And farm to coach Brad Johnson told us they hunt the ball. Yep. They had a 42-25 rebound advantage in the semifinals, and we've seen that today, that despite Farmington's size, so far Nashville's been able to capitalize on those long rebounds. Yeah, like I said, uh, they've been getting that uh, leverage and keeping those uh, that uh, the, the height from being an advantage for them. And that goes back to what you were saying, the games that they've scheduled against these other teams, uh, they've been preparing for this moment. They, uh, I believe that they thought this it was a high chance that they would see Nashville, uh, I'm sorry, see Farmington in the championship. So what better way to do that than prepare against other teams during the season? And we showed that shot that won it last year. And Coach Brad Johnson said there were weeks of mourning. And yeah. last year has been in the back of their mind. And I love how he put it, Amon. He said, this is not about revenge. This is about redemption. That one yeah. swatted away there from Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, 
uh, Coach Coach Johnson does the job, and, and I uh, I told you this earlier. Every summer, I mean, he just gets his girls up. I mean, like they're ready to turn around and go, um, and and so I'm sure that they've been looking forward to this. And it starts with Jenna Lawrence, the kind of player who was in the gym at 5:45 a.m. Brad Johnson says, yeah. off the mark there. Lawrence, the rebound. She took it especially hard last year. She was devastated and blamed herself. Coach Brad Johnson said, and that went all the way in there. Aaron Adams, the sophomore. That was a good take there. Maybe that'll get them started uh, rolling here with this pressure that uh, the scrappers are bringing. They kind of got that in. Coach Johnson said she had to take the blame off of Lawrence's shoulders, but she's had a different look in her eye. Unfinished business in this game as she tries to cap her career with a championship. A travel there called on Nashville. Yeah, Farmington causing a little problem with the uh, height there. Made him take an extra step. Yeah, and um, and and but that's a sign of a great player mm -hmm. uh, for uh, Lawrence. I mean, like to take something personal. You know, it was a. Uh, you know, it was a team uh, effort, but, you know, she put it on herself, and I think she's coming back trying to prove a point this year. Started her career at Melbourne, won a title there. From the free throw line, not good. Bershears, the other 6'3 player, couldn't get the rebound. Nashville has it. Yeah, Nashville is pushing that ball in transition. They just don't stop. Caroline Dean, wild shot goes. Nice shot, and, and, and then she comes back with the, the steal. Look at this effort from the Scrapperettes. A jump yes. ball there. It's going to stay with Nashville. Yes, this is this is this is what they live off of. This is what Nashville is known for, bringing that pressure and and, and just keeping on it from from quarter one to quarter four. And Coach Paul Dean for Nashville said one thing about his team: they're laid back. They don't get rattled. They're never really nervous. Inbound, Scoggins off the mark. Carver the rebound, throws it back up, and Bershears has it. He said they play hard and they play together. Good rotation on the ball. Out to Adams off the mark. Boy, that is all hard on that rebound. Yes, it is. It is. They are putting themselves in position to get those rebounds. This is Shaylen Lyle, one of the Lyle twins on Nashville. Off the mark there. And another jump ball. Yep. They'll go to Farmington. We have three sets of sisters in this game, by the way. The Lyle twins uh -huh. and the Dean sisters for Nashville, as well as the Your sisters for Farmington. Farm thing, yeah. <laughs> Nashville applying that pressure, but... And that's the thing uh, that... A deep, deep three is Nice good. shot, nice Reed shot. Shiree knocks it down. That's what has to happen for Farmington is when they get those rotations for those good shots, they got to make sure they knock them down because Nashville right now is not really giving them an opportunity for a second chance points. Three Shiree. I love Brad Johnson called her the little engine that drives us. Yes, yeah, she is. She is out there rolling for them. This is Carver on the drive. Over Lawrence. Can't get it to go. Rebound underneath by the other six-footer, Casey McCumber. Well, how many teams can shift a couple six-footers out for another six-footer? I was just about to mention that. <laughs> sub, sub one out and bring another one in. Final minute a here the quick moving first well. quarter. Dean, the shot is good. Caroline nice Dean, the sophomore. Yeah. And again, oh. Farmington is breaking that press now. They're handing their... their, their they are finding it in that pressure. The they got a steal. And a Ruth Shire Shire puts it in. That. Yes, yes, yes. That was a good job on, uh, for her. But sure. I was just saying that Farmington's finding a way to handle that pressure now, getting good ball movement and finding some uh, a couple of easy shots here. Yeah, a little taste of Nashville's own medicine there. Yep. Good pressure there. On the ground, they will call another joint possession here, and this will be Nashville's ball. So final 10 seconds here, Amon, and I think if you're Nashville, you want to try to get a bucket here, feel good going into the second quarter. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're going to try to uh, find some way to attack the rack here. They've been pushing the ball up the floor and, and, and uh, being real aggressive on offense right now this first quarter. Carver will inbound, gets it to Scoggins. 
the MVP in this game last year, off the Dean. Five seconds now. The kick out. Good pitch out. The three is blocked. Good block. Marin Adams, the sophomore. They found some penetration, got a pitch in the corner, but she was out there to get that block. And that's a, just another example of that lane for Farmington. Blocked again. Lawrence has it. Throws it away, and that'll do it for the first quarter. It's a fast moving, fast paced first excited. quarter. Farmington jumped out to a 5 0 lead. Nashville clawed back, and now it's Farmington with the 18 14 lead after one. You're watching the Centennial State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Sport is now a session. on what matters. That's why we've made our hamburgers square. When you want to experience the delicious taste of Wendy's hamburgers, squares the beef. It's set for the start of the second quarter here at Bank OZK Arena, game one of 12. One of the most fun weeks of the year if you're a basketball fan in this state. Can't wait for all the great matchups to unfold. And this is about as good a matchup as we have of any of them. Couple teams that have been on a collision course all season, meeting for the first time since that state championship game a year ago. And you see the students down here on a Thursday afternoon. Uh, great energy here in Bank OZK Arena. Always a great crowd on hand. And a fun three days in the Spa City. Farmington team 35 and one, Nashville 29 and three. They've been one and two in just about every rankings you'll find anywhere in this state all season. Oh yeah. Thank Lawrence gives it off. This is Hannah Moss in trouble. Nearly threw it away. Instead, Adams has it down low, and they're gonna call a foul down there. And they call that a shooting foul. Yeah, they call it a shooting foul. They uh, they said it was continuation. Um, just one thing to note, this this game has been fast paced and there's only been two oh, well that's their third uh uh three uh fouls total. So this game has been played pretty clean. The ref has been allowing them to play. Coach's dream, down, isn't it, is to not have oh, a lot yeah. of breaks? Always, always, always. Just a couple of things to note in that first quarter. Um uh, the rebounding Nashville actually uh won it by two. Um, and, and those those are one of the keys that we talked about to the game. It's no second chance points to get no rebound. Three from the corner, Hannah Moss. It's Moss, and she's, she's working it today. Brad Johnson says Hannah Moss has that, you'll appreciate this, old man game. <laughs> Knows the right angles. Yes, 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 which speaks to that skill that she got uh, uh, the first quarter there in the putback. Long two not there, and the rebound by Farmington. Oh, both teams playing some pressure ball. Kick out, same spot. Adams, not this time. Underneath, Lawrence to put back. And uh, Coach Dean is going to call a timeout here because I think he sees uh, how they're beating that press, and now they just got uh, a second chance points uh, uh, there with one of the keys that we talked about. Yeah, so Paul uh, Dean's going to slow things down here. Yeah. It, it, it's so surprising when you – when you just look at these two teams warm up, it is safe to say Nashville does not exactly have the height advantage. <laughs> but, but boy, they do hunt the basketball. I mean, they're they just so good at the rebounding. Basketball. They hunt the basketball. And, 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 and the one thing that, that, that they're not going to do is you can beat their press, but if you're not set up and ready to go, that, <laughs> that pressure still comes. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, those girls are hustling right back uh, down. And right now it's led to them uh, – making Farmington shoot shots, but be there in the paint to get those rebounds. I'm curious to see what's going to happen here in these next couple of minutes with the pressure and uh, if Farmington can still handle it to get second chance points there. We mentioned Farmington's fourth straight finals appearance. Shared that 2020 title with Star City. 21, they lose to Harrison. 22 to this team, Nashville. That would have been a much needed bucket there for Nashville. Lawrence ahead to Moss. Off the side, off the put back underneath is there. Casey McCumber, the six-foot sophomore. 
And a foul's going to be called there on Adams. Farmington trying to put a little pressure there themselves uh, to slow Nashville down. This entire Nashville team just has a motor that just keeps going forward and forward and forward. Um, if you want to coach uh, something Coach Dean preaches a lot. Down 12 here. They need a bucket. They'll a maintain of offensive possession here. A three. And that's good. Dean Caroline like Dean. Well, she's one of those players who never stops and has that hard motor. She does. Blocked from behind block from by behind. Kylie Scoggins. Here comes Nashville on the push. Underneath, Carver back to the basket in trouble. She'll kick it back out and throws it out of bounds. This will go Farmington's way. Just made a little mistake there trying to pitch it back out. Relocate there. Nashville, by the way, 8 of 25 from the field so far. They're shooting 14%. Yeah, and that and that just goes back to that size again um, that uh, Farmington is bringing. It's starting to bother them a little bit. So Nashville is still trying to bring that pressure, trying to work things out in their favor. Jamira London here kicks it out. Adams on nice the mark. Three. Adams just that three. So being able to hit those threes like right there, being – Able to transition out and hit those threes. They're going to find open At the shots. Other end, that Come one's back good. to the other end. <laughs> Jesse Lyle answers. This Lyle just came back and responded. And 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 this is what Nashville wants wants to do. They want they 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 want to press that issue. They want to press that issue, and they may give up some uh, shots, but they're going to try to be there in the end to get those rebounds and push them right back down the floor. Foul's going to be called there on Reese Shiree, who, by the way, if her last name sounds familiar, you may know her mom, former Amber Nicholas, one-time record-setting point guard at Arkansas in the 90s, now the director of basketball ops for the Razorbacks. And she has stepped into a vocal role for them. Adams underneath nice for Shears, and a foul's going to be called there. So nice Shears will go to the line. Adams right now is having a real good game, both offensively and defensively for uh, for Farmington. Yeah, she already has 10 high upside, just a sophomore. Yeah. How about what Bershears brings to this team? We'll talk a lot about Jenna Lawrence in this game, but, uh, you know, when Bershears is in there, a 6'3 player, she can, she can flex yeah, Lawrence yeah. out. Yeah, and 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 she she allows Lawrence to move around and do other things uh, for Farmington. Scoggins and a foul is going to be called there. It's on Jamira London. So we talked a little bit about Jenna Lawrence and her motivation. Really good story. A small town phenom to say the least. Out of Melbourne, won a title there. Wanted. Higher competition and goes to Farmington. Looking to end her senior career with a state championship. Underneath, wide open, KK Perkins. Good move, good pass. Good move, good pass. But we have not mentioned, by the way, Nashville yeah. is without Aaliyah Hollins, who's really yes. the player that you would think that 5'9 would be most equipped to handle Farmington. But she had a knee injury Saturday in the semifinal game. They're without her, and they expect KK Perkins to step up in her place. Yes, and that was a, uh, that was a good play by uh, her uh, to keep herself available to finish that shot. And she's been the one uh, actually in the first half that was helping uh, Nashville to get those defensive rebounds, those box outs. Step back three. Not there from Scoggins. Bershears the rebound. Gives it off to Lawrence. Comes Farmington. London nice lays it in. Nice move by London. Jamira London, she had 10 points in the semifinal game. Ten point game here. Bounce pass underneath Perkins. Not there. Uh, just had just happened to miss that. That was a good move. London. Use some speed, but loses it. And That's Perkins that has it. for Nashville. Final three and a half here in the second quarter. 
been a fast moving first half. Lyle throws it up off the backboard, gets her own she rebound. Right the back back. Can't get that. Brashears has another rebound, gives it off to Jenna Lawrence. So those are two plays we'll have to look at um, and, and try to remember for, for the second half for Nashville, those two opportunities for those four uh, uh, points. It might be a six-point swing here. We'll come back here. Farmington going to the line. But first, let's check in back at Arkansas PBS Studios to see what they have on tap for us at halftime. Hi, I'm Steve Sullivan. And I'm Ed Leon. Coming up on the Halftime Show. That wacky and wonderful world of Arkansas team mascots. And the educational side of Arkansas PBS. We'll see you at halftime. Hey, I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. And now, thanks to PBS Passport, you can travel with me and watch all 10 seasons of Rick Steves Europe and all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today and get your passport. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. We on that next level. We on that next level. Well, Nashville down 10. They're shooting just 10 of 31 in this game, but Caroline Dean is doing her part. She's five for eight from the field, and Amon Love, she has 11 already. Yeah, she is uh, She is, She is. is the player that's keeping them in, in the game. She's getting those steals. She's, uh, she's getting those quality shots, allowing... Uh, and, and also put in on that pressure. She's like the leader of the pressure that's going on here. So. Meantime, it's Adams leading the way for Farmington. You brought up a great point there. A couple easy buckets that Nashville just missed on the other end there, and those are the kind of plays you may look back on. Meantime, Farmington going to the line here. Yeah, yeah, and they just completed one, so that's kind of like a, 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 a swing there for them of those four points that were missed and then the uh, – and now this free throw. I'm curious to see uh, here in just a minute um, if Miss Goggins is going to start uh, stepping up here. We haven't heard too much from her. No. She's, uh, she's gotten some shots off, but I'm curious to see what's going to happen here in these next couple of minutes. Yes, yeah, Scoggin and Carver combined two for 12 so far in this game. Those really are the two scorers on a balanced Nashville team. Yeah. A foul call there. That's a, Nashville will take this for sure. Yeah, that was a good drive by Dean, Jeff. And take another look here, Amon. And, and Nashville's going to take any of those kind of opportunities, rack up some fouls and try oh, to get yeah. to the line. Yeah, that's one of the things you want to look look at if you're a uh, team that's a little bit behind. Try to pick up some uh, fouls, get to the line. Ahead in transition, Reese Shirey lays it in. That was a good transition bucket by Farmington where to look up. Shiree shoots 55% from the field. And now Nashville, it feels like down 13, kind of in a danger zone here a little bit. Needs some momentum going into the half. That one's not there. Lawrence no, has the rebound. Shot. She got off a good, good uh, shot, just kind of rimmed in, in and out there. So Jenna Lawrence now three rebounds away from 1,000 in her career. And there's that. Pressure from Nashville again. Yeah. Two minutes and nine seconds in the 13-point lead. Um, I'm sure Nashville is coming uh, down here this time and at least try to secure a really good good shot, which which they've had a few good shots here in the past uh, uh, time. But let's see if they can knock one down. How many Rom players have you seen with a thousand rebounds? I've <laughs> I I don't know if I've met one <laughs> to, to uh, be honest. So this is going to be my first time. Scoggin, she's got to get going here. Dumps it off and taken away by Farmington. And that uh, and that makes it 2 minutes and 39 seconds that Farmington has gone without a basket. At the other end, blocked from behind. Scoggins, the heart play. Here's Dean on the drive and draws the foul. 
Yeah. So they were they were almost at like three. They were almost at three minutes with the scoring drought. They were over five. So now this is opportunity with clock stop to knock this down to like 11 point lead. Uh, a few more possessions here left. Oh, that hurts. Hey, but to only get five shots, you only go over five from the field over three minutes. You yeah. know, you're not getting too many opportunities either. Yeah. Farmington's working that clock to get a good shot off. That'll hurt Miss Boat there. Yep. Lawrence gets it across the timeline. And a double good dribble. pressure. This national team is not is uh, is not going to give up. You uh, you said it earlier about Coach Dean says his players don't get get rattled. They keep they keep the game plan and they keep going. A Farmington team that is 69 and three over the last three years. They are just so hard to match up with. 13 point lead over the last 90 seconds here in the first half. Been a fun one so far. It has been. Well, they're going to wave off the shot. <laughs> Calling that little bump there. That put them, uh, puts Farmington in 16,000. Curious to see how they're going to win this next play or how they're going to attack it. Inbounded to Olivia Dean, the junior, the older sister of the Dean sisters. Can't get that to go. The put nice back underneath by Carver's not there either. Carver Boy. can get that put back. Nashville's 10 of 33 from the field in this game. Yeah, that's uh, – their pressure's going well, but it's not going to help. That's not going to help them. They can't put it in the hole. Forty-eight seconds left here. You're pretty. You consider Nashville's ten of thirty-three and Farmington's thirteen of twenty-four, and yep. yet they're only down thirteen. And it's a team certainly capable of hitting timely three-pointers. Yes, yes. Uh, so this uh, this game is not over. They just need to make sure that they can try to execute a play right here towards the end. Scoggins on the drive. Good drive, it, good drive, and good she shot at the line. Boy, good that is time. exactly what the Scrapperettes needed. Exactly, exactly. And she was the one I was speaking of earlier of, of you know, just needing to, uh, to step up a little bit and provide some points. That was a good, good uh, drive. Now Paul Dean says she has a knack for making the big play, and boy, did Nashville need that. Chance to get it back within 10. She scored 35 in a quarterfinal game. Yes, and and that that speaks to not just her, but this national team. How somehow anyone on this team can just step up and start knocking down shots. Um, so I I think they're going to keep their uh, cool. And underneath McCumber can't get it to go. First up a shot here, so now Nashville could hold for the last shot. Final 15, try to get it into single digits. Carver hoists it up, blocked. Gets it back underneath, a spin around underneath, and Shaylen Lyle will go to the line. That brings up another foul for Farmington. Well, they've We're got it see. down to a nine-point game, Amon. Yeah. And 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 that looks good for them. That's 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 going to be some motivation for them going in just to see like where they were here in double digits just a second ago. Now it's in single digits. Got both. Final seven point six here for Farmington. The inbound finally to Lawrence. Five seconds. Lawrence. Good Up ahead, over. Reese Shirey got to put it off at the buzzer. She's and got she it. makes it. The floor with the buzzer my. goes for Reese Shirey. It's a 10-point Farmington lead. Knew this one would be close, and these two teams are within 10 at the half. 37-27, Cardinals the lead at halftime. You are watching the Centennial State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. 
broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Hey everybody, Steve Sullivan here. It's halftime at Bank OZK Arena in Hot Springs, but don't go anywhere because we've got a lot in store for you. Let's get right to it. From taking selfies to hyping the crowd, mascots bring unique energy to sports, and it turns out that some mascots are a little more unique than most. Oh, do I sit here? Okay. <clears throat> oh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> okay, whenever I'm ready. Mascotting is for the bull, the audacious. Arkansas is chock full of bears and eagles and bulldogs. In fact, there are 354 schools with mascots and more than a few double ups. But for all the basic beasts, there are a few out of the box mascots that only exist in the natural state. From Batesville Southside aptly named Southerners to pint sized pests like the Ford Ice Red Bugs, here are a few of the wonderfully weird mascots in Arkansas. Arkansas has three different pitchfork brandishing imps, all unique to the state the Moralton Devil Dogs, the Wonderview Daredevils, and the Gurdon Go Devils all sport the typically horned mascot. Although the lumber town of Gurdon got the Go Devils from a piece of logging equipment for quickly pulling up trees. Harrison's figurehead is the one and only Goblin. The original Goblin was created in 1927 to give the school newspaper a name. Sporting blue hair and a golden face, the Goblin started out as a smiling friend, but grew angrier and more fiendish in the 60s with its current meaner incarnation. Along that same mean streak, in 1925, the University of Arkansas at Monticello set out to strike fear in their athletic adversaries. What better name for a frightening foe near the agricultural heart of the state than the bull weevils? Every Arkansan knows these tiny beetles have been decimating cotton crops and terrorizing farmers since the state was founded. Danville took on the moniker of the Little Johns after the French explorer Hetty Jean. Legend tales of a heroic young French girl who visited the state in search of her long lost love. The state has since used the moniker for a river, mountain, and Arkansas's first state park. Speaking of firsts, the Arkansas School for the Deaf have been known as the Leopards since 1941, three decades before the rock band Def Leppard was ever founded. However, the famous felines became fast friends when the band toured the state in 2016. From daredevils to bull weevils, goblins, and more, Arkansas is brimming with spunky and funky mascots. Who knew there were so many one-of-a-kind mascots in Arkansas? Now let's turn to the student athlete with the emphasis on the student part. We reached out to schools all over the state looking for athletes who not only excel on the field, but in the classroom too. Here's the Arkansas PBS Student All-Stars Class of 2023 from the girls 2A, 4A, and 6A classification. We start off with Mallory Malone from the Conway Christian Eagles. Mallory is captain of the cheer squad during football season, and she plans to become a teacher and a coach. Next up, we have Jalia Hooten with the Heber Springs Panthers. Jalia plans to attend Murray State to study health sciences as well as run track. She enjoys reading, playing sports, hiking, and drawing. And finally, we have Chloe Clardy representing the Conway Wabas Cats. Chloe has a 4.0 GPA and is heading to Stanford to play basketball. To see all the Arkansas PBS Student All-Stars, visit the Arkansas PBS YouTube channel or scan the QR code. 
Congratulations and keep up the good work. Now let's get over to Ed Leon. He's going to let you know a bit about what else is going on here at your Arkansas PBS. Ed? Thanks, Sully. Hey, we thank you for tuning in today to watch some of Arkansas's best athletes compete on their biggest stage. These broadcasts are part of our mission to educate and serve students from pre-K all the way to their senior years. And I don't just mean their senior year of high school. We have programs that educate well beyond high school. At Arkansas PBS, we're all about lifelong learning. Now this is where the magic happens. From videos for workforce training and development to our Rise and Shine Summer Learning Program featuring Arkansas's top teachers of the year, Arkansas PBS provides free, lifelong learning resources for all Arkansans. Our creative and engaging educational programs help kids learn important educational concepts while sparking their imaginations and instill a love of learning that will stay with them throughout their lives. Arkansas PBS, we are education. On Arkansas PBS, our programs educate as they entertain. And there's something for everybody. It's our mission to ensure that, and we want to let you know how you can help us with that mission. Scan the QR code on your screen. If you're enjoying these championship games, if you appreciate our commitment to lifetime education, then become a part of our team. That QR code will tell you how, and you'll see it pop up throughout these championship games. All right, it's time to get you back to the action. Sully, we got to go. Yes, it is time to get back to Bank OZK Arena for the second half. Here on the home of the high school basketball state finals, Arkansas PBS. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. It's now a session. Back for the second half in the Spa City of game one of 12. As the Spa City turns into title town over the next three days, some great matchups on tap. Starting here with the 4A championship, it's been a fun first half as we welcome you back for second half play. Kyle Deckelbaum and Robinson coach Amon Love with you. Great to have the expertise of coaches on the telecast with us. No one knows these teams better than you guys do, and it's been a fun, fast-moving first half. Take a look at some of our first half stats, and I think some surprises here for sure. What stands out before we talk about any individual, though, Amon, certainly you look at that field goal percentage for these two teams. Yes, that uh, uh, that 31 percent for uh, Nashville. I think that just goes back and shows like how you know the size of Farmington is bothering them a little bit. They're getting good drives, um, but you know they just didn't finish. We talked about how they uh, I think they went like 0 for 6 before Scoggins uh, made that final and uh, uh, one shot, but that that height was bothering them, and so they were you know getting good drives, but just not able to finish. And, yeah, Farmington team with three six-footers, two players that are 6'3", and on paper you look and you say, how could Nashville possibly match up with all that size? And yet they won this game a year ago. Take a look at some of our uh, first-half highlights here. And uh, it's been a fun one, Amon. Farmington kind of jumped out to that lead, and there's Jenna Lawrence all hyped up. And Nashville, to their credit, they just keep fighting back in. You see Perkins, who's stepping up for the injured Aaliyah Hollins. Yeah. But you just wonder, Carver and Scoggins both – the scores for Nashville kind of cold from the field. Scoggins with a couple big buckets, though, for two. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for Scoggins that and one that she got towards the end kind of propels her in, in, into the second half to get more involved. Carver is just getting a little bit bothered uh, by the size um, with uh, Lawrence guarding her. Um, 
she may try to find some ways, maybe get like some up and unders or like maneuver to get uh, shots off of her. So hopefully that'll come back up and and uh, and and that should bring that that should probably be, bring this game back uh, closer. And you see a great yeah. crowd on hand and. There is Brad Johnson in his 14th season, the coach of Farmington. An incredible run for Farmington. Four straight finals appearances, and yet they have just one championship to show for it. A shared one back in 20. Meantime, Paul Dean over there for Nashville. And you imagine he's going to be telling his team, Amon, pressure, pressure, pressure. Jenna Lawrence, the future Razorback. Her size makes a difference, but she does have four turnovers in this game. She does, um, and and that just goes to show uh, the uh, scrappers and their pressure that that that, that they're bringing. How relentless they they are. They're they're, they're not going to stop. They're going to continue this. So you you can expect third and fourth quarter for this to happen. So here we go. Start of the third quarter with the 4A girls championship on the line here in Hot Springs. Lauren Carver, the senior, off to Scoggins, and here comes Farmington. All the pressure from Nashville and nearly got it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 they're going to keep uh, bringing it. They're going to slow them down, try to get them uh, into a shot that they want to get to. How about so Marin Adams? Like that. <laughs> On the drive, Marin Adams. She's having quite the game. 11 now. Pardon me, 13. Yeah, she is, she's having a good game. The sophomore's having a good game here. And a very quick timeout. Well, Paul Dean needed that one. He did, because uh, they were about to get a 10 second call there. Just, you know, just a little mishap in getting the ball in and then kind of handling it. So, how about the sophomore, Marin Adams? 13, not the player when you look at their roster who you think is going to come in and lead this game, but she's been fantastic for Farmington. No, but she's one of those that, you know, when when the pressure's on the uh, others and you ask to step up, then she's answered the call. She's uh she's been that one to knock down those outside shots uh, from the outside, and then she just proved there by taking the ball to the hole. Um, she's been to the uh, the free throw line a couple of times, I think, um, as well. So, so she's answering the call when all the other girls are being uh, – put on the pressure. We knew that Nashville was going to bring pressure. And so now she's getting those open shots. And now they have to pay attention to her. We saw inside that Farmington huddle. And again, what's on their mind, not revenge for losing last year's championship to Nashville. Redemption, the word they use. There yes. were weeks of mourning, Coach Brad Johnson said after that game. Yes, and I'm, I'm – I'm sure that they've, they've thought about this moment, and now they're in it, um, and they're performing well. Scoggins taken away. Lawrence has it. 2,200 points plus in her career. Came into this game with 98 three-pointers. Yes. A deep three there is good. Reese Shiree leaving the hand, hanging a little bit. Yes, she is. And, and she's been the other one who's also stepped up for Farmington um, uh, in the first half. And now she knocks down a big uh, three at the start of this quarter. Here. That was her 60th three-pointer of the season. Sharp shooting. Dean on the drive. Block. Starting to see Farmington size, and a foul's going to be called there. Yes. Um, and 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 we knew from the uh, start that um, that Farmington's size was going to be an uh, issue, and how would Nashville come back from it or like adjust to it? Hey, a special thanks to Capos Tacos of Hot Springs at 200 Higdon Ferry Road for providing food for our fantastic crew. We want to thank all the hardworking folks here for Arkansas PBS Sports down here to make these broadcasts possible. And. Brad Johnson tried to get the time out there, and I think they uh, do grant it to him. Yeah. So both teams using a quick time out here, and what is suddenly a 15-point Farmington lead. Yes, um, and and that just happened in a matter of a couple of minutes. Um, you, you saw Scoggins come out, and and she she is trying to be a little bit more uh, aggressive on the offensive end. Uh, just hasn't been able to get started, but Farmington has come back and knocked down a, a big three um, from Shari, and then uh, Adams. Penetrating with her shot. So. Talked and about rebounding and a, a closer statistic than you would think. 23-19 in favor of Farmington. It is, and I think that that's one of those things that that has not made the score look a little bit more different than what it is. 
um, with the rebounding. Yeah, great point. So Hannah Moss, the junior, inbounds it. Marin Adams, the sophomore. Underneath, Bershears, 6-3, and taken away. Scoggins has it. Rushing the other way, Nashville on the drive, and the runner's not there. Yeah, Scoggins is still, um, she's still been aggressive and still trying to get the shots just are not falling for her right yeah, now. Yeah, two for 10 from the field right now. Here comes Jenna Lawrence, lays it in. And nice. Farmington starting to pull away here, Amon. Yeah, that was a nice cut down the middle, way to find her. Um, and, and she comes in to finish. Three-pointer not there. Rebound underneath Carver. Trying to find some room for the putback. And that's a and nice she move. draws the foul. And we talked about that at halftime. You know, with Lawrence giving her issues, trying to get maybe like some uh, fakes and up and unders um, on her that and she happened to do it that time. Did Carver another look here. Carver and Scoggins, two players that have been on varsity since their freshman year. Paul Dean saw something in them. And look where the two of them have helped lead this program. Bershears kicks it back out. That three is no good. Rebound Nashville. Scrapperette's running the other way. Shaylin Lyle running into contact. And he'll call the blocking foul there. Yes, that's 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 something Nashville is going to continue to do. And as a coach, when when you're down, uh, especially like like at this point, trying to draw fouls, stop the clock and get points, you know, with the clock stop, that's something you would love to do. Because um, it does two things. One, it gets you back in the game with, with that clock uh, being stopped. And then two, it gets the other team in foul trouble. So you may get some of their key players in foul trouble and move them out. Two big free throws there. Back to a 12-point game. Farmington handling the pressure here. They give Bring it off to Hannah Moss. And... Turned over, Nashville has it. Scrapperette's running the other way. Scoggins moving quickly, trying to find a lane. Hoist it up, not there. Carver comes down with it. To the corner, cross-court pass, though, and Farmington regains possession. Yeah, that height kind of bothered her a little bit on that pass. She saw someone open. Moss off to Adams. In the corner, Jamira London. Back to Adams. Adams dribbling through traffic. And lays it in. She is filling it. The 5'11", Marin Adams, a sophomore. Yeah. High upside for her, but she has been fantastic in this game. Layup falls at the other end for Shaylin Lyle. Yeah, she was trying to take advantage of that uh, uh, size uh, uh, difference, the speed and size. Uh, Nashville's kind of picking up that pressure a little Lawrence, more. Lawrence, deep three around the rim. Rebound Scoggins. And that's something that they want to do. They want to try to speed this game up, try to get them to take shots, and try to get back in this game more. And a foul call there. A break of the action. Fast moving. Nashville's trying to make another run. They're down 12. You're watching the Centennial State Basketball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. It's now a session. all know the best ways to take care of our teeth, like brushing twice a day and flossing once a day. But there's another small thing you can do that protects your teeth in a big way. If you or your child is involved in contact sports, wearing a mouth guard is important to protect teeth. Mouth guards cover teeth and gums to prevent and reduce injury to teeth, lips, and gums. There are several varieties of mouth guards, so you can find one that is affordable and easy to use. A mouth guard should fit properly, be durable and easy to clean, and not restrict speech or breathing. Talk with your dentist about which mouth guard is best for you or your child's needs. At Delta Dental of Arkansas, we're proud to be the champions of your smile. For more helpful oral health tips and information, visit www.deltadentalar.com. 
Now, for a copy of any of the state championship games, go to mnmproductions.net to place your order. Imagine there are going to be a few fans and parents who are going to want a copy of this game, depending how this one winds up. And we come down the stretch of the third quarter here. We'll see if Nashville has a run in them. Certainly feels like them. Um, they've got to at least get it to single digits going into the fourth to yes. have a shot. Yes. Lyle on the drive, kicks it out. Carver. Guarded by Jenna Lawrence. Talk about a height difference. Deep three is blocked by Casey McCumber. And that was a nice block. She timed it perfectly. And maybe a little frustration foul. That's going to be charged to Scoggins. Farmington has done a good job through this pressure of, of, of rotating the ball and getting good, good shots. Um, and then with Adams stepping up this uh, quarter. Jenna Lawrence off the mark, her own rebound, the put back and one. Jenna Lawrence, the future Razorback, going to the line. Yes, very, very, very hard to stop that, uh, like right there in the paint. And that goes back to one of our uh, key points we talked about, those second chance points. Farmington gets those second chance points. It's going to be very hard uh, to try to stay with them. She converts. Well, Jenna Lawrence, there are myriad statistics that speak to her incredible high school career. How about 136 and 6 career high school record for Lawrence? That She's lost amazing. one home game from third to 12th grade. That was amazing. That was a good move there. One home loss since third grade. A fight on the floor here, and they're going to call that on Hannah Moss. She has a lot of great statistics. I'm I'm amazed by the thousand rebound when you, uh, uh, that I begin to. That is that is a big accomplishment there as well. Great fans on hand here at Bangosi K Arena. Farmington and Nashville game one of 12 over the next three days. Buzzer to buzzer coverage here on Arkansas PBS Sports. Deep threes off the mark. Rebound to Myra London. Final two and a half of the third quarter here. Farmington looking to extend their lead. Boy, she is feeling it. She yes. should be. How about Marin Adams? Marin Adams has, has, has been doing a whole lot this game. She is inside out. Uh, she's played some good defense. She has really stepped up for Farmington today. A reverse, not there. Rebound underneath, Casey McCumber. So if you're an opposing coach, you think about who you scout for. Amon, if you're a turn over there for Carver, you count for the big six footers, right? Yes. Carver blocked by Jenna Lawrence. Nice block there. Way to get back in transition defense. Um, and stop that play. That, that could have been something that could have turned into a two, two points and maybe like a hard press by Coach Dean's team. Um, but she came down and stopped it, and now they got to come down and execute in half court. Underneath, that's there. Good move by Dean. She's, she's doing her best to keep, uh, to keep her team in the game. Minute 40 here. They still will have a couple of possessions to try to get this in uh, possibly the single digits um, with maybe like a couple of threes or like a three and a two. There's Adam. She's up to 18. Make it 20. She is eight of nine from the field. She has been the X factor in this game tonight. She, uh, she is she has come in this quarter alone um, and been huge for Farmington. Dean on another drive. And Farmington shooting 55% from the field. High percentage team with all those bigs for sure, but this is probably even higher than normal. Now that bound, it's going to stay with the Cardinals. 14 point Farmington lead. This has been an impressive showing from the Cardinals. This has been. Again, with, um, of course, you, you, you think Farmington, you're going to think uh, Lawrence. But uh, Adams and even uh, uh, Sherry in the uh, first half has, has, has stepped up huge. 
Good passing. McCumber. Cross quick hands in this, yeah. And a jump ball. Stay with Farmington here. Those fans perhaps starting to feel it for Farmington. Making the trip down from Northwest Arkansas. Here's Lawrence. Through traffic and out of bounds. Yeah, they were just trying to use the lob and trying to get Lawrence to use our height to get off a good side. Nashville did a good job of scoring. I know some of the fans behind her, <laughs> behind us are one of those fouls called. Final 40 seconds here in the third quarter. Dean gives it off. Uh, just thought about the three there to Lyle. Instead, the floater. Nice little floater. Take it away. Lyle. Oh, and they got a foul on there. And now, again, they still have one more possession here to try to get it. Uh, Get it to 10, maybe with a three, get it down, uh, get it down to nine. Nashville not going away quite yet. Feels like they need a bucket here. Wide Good open pass. Bucket, plays it in. Good Burton pass. Kate Kate Burton feels like she knows where to be at the right time. She knows exactly where to be. Full and court pressure here from Nashville. And they got the turnover. Four seconds, three seconds. Let's see if they get off. It, gotta put it up. And, and she gets it off. The scrapper answer in it, going to the fourth. They've got it down to eight. Are you kidding? This is gonna be a fun fourth quarter. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Centennial State Basketball Championship. Look at that, the Arkansas PBS Sports. Since our family one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Back in Hot Springs, and we are sending a special thank you to Schlotsky's of Hot Springs at 3251 Central Avenue for providing food for our fantastic, hard-working crew. Talk about hard-working Nashville with that full-court pressure makes a difference. An 8-0 run over the final minute 12 of that third quarter to do exactly what Amon Love, you said they need to do, get it to single digits. Now down eight as we start the fourth. In a game with the 4A state championship on the line here at Bank OZK Arena. Yeah, you got to give uh, Carolyn Dean a lot of credit here. She, uh, she really stepped up. That drive is good. Jesse Lyle lays it in a 10 0 run. Yeah, her sister was over there screaming at her, tell her, take her, take her, take her. <laughs> Marin Adams has been so hot at the other end. Take it away. Nashville somehow comes away with it. Oh boy. Six point game to the corner. A fake on the drive, Carver. Couldn't finish the pretty move. And a foul there, that's a rebound by Jenna Lawrence. By the way, that's her eighth rebound. That puts her at 1,000 rebounds for the season, for her uh, career, I should say. Not for the season, for her career. Yeah, that's, Came in eight that's, shy. That's an amazing feat there. Gotta give that young lady a lot of credit for everything that she's done. Not just for a school, but for high school basketball. Yeah, yeah. high school basketball. Is good. It's a 10 0 Nashville run. London in trouble underneath. This is going to Scrapper X way. And this is Nashville Scrapper Ball. Yeah. Here comes Nashville. Shalen Lyle on the drive. Hacking the way up. 
by Zoe Bershears. And what Nashville is trying to do now is they're, they're, they're trying to find a, uh, what they feel is like the weakest link on their team defensively. So, uh, so they're using Lau uh, to go at Bershears. Another look here. For Shears, offers from SMU, BYU, and UAB. Highly thought of sophomore. Oh boy, 54-50. Seven 54 minutes to play. 50. And we need to keep an eye on the fouls the rest of the way for this game, uh, both team-wise and individually. This is Jenna Lawrence. Off to Reese Shiree. Across, Adams. Leading scorer in this game. Blocked by Carver, gets it back. Loose ball, Nashville comes away with it. Up ahead, Nashville has numbers. At the other end, the lay-in is good. Lay-in is good by Lyle. Timeout, Farmington. How about this? I think this is what everybody wanted. 54-52 ball game. This is this is crazy. So how about this? The Scrappers, who trailed by double digits for much of the second half, have grinded their way in it. Full court pressure, creating turnovers. Farmington up to 16 turnovers. Yes. Just seven for the Scrapperettes, and they've got it within two. This is exactly what well, you said, Amon. This is what they do. Yeah, they, I, first quarter, second, like one through four. This is this is what you're gonna see from from uh, them, and they're and they're relentless. And so, how about for for Farmington? Your theme all season has been redemption, and here you are. You had that double digit lead. You've seen it wither away. If you're Brad Johnson, what are you telling your team to kind of maintain composure here? I'm telling my team to settle down. Um, we've already established in the first half what we can do defensively and offensively. Um, don't second guess yourself when it comes to breaking that uh, uh, press and we know that they're coming at us, so we're just gonna rotate the ball, get it uh, get it uh, inside and you know and score and then come back and play solid defense. Um, I think on the de on the defensive end what, what they want to do is play like a little bit better help uh, uh, defense and maybe have uh, national take longer uh, shots, more outside shots. Here we go. Jenna Lawrence brings it across the timeline for Farmington. For Shears kicks it out. That three's off the mark. Ooh. And Nashville all heart a rebound. Chance to tie in on this possession or take the lead. Across, Scoggins drives baseline. Floater, no good, missed everything there. And Marin Adams the rebound. To the corner, Moss, a kick out. That three's off the mark for Shears, fighting for the rebound, and a foul's gonna be called over the back, and this will be Nashville basketball. Yep, Carver battling in there to get that position for that rebound. And now they move into the one and one. So you mentioned how big free throws are gonna be down the stretch here. Sends Lauren Carver to the line with, by the way, a long ways to go in this one. Yes, yes, yes. Especially with this 35-second shot clock now. I mean, like, like you have time for so many possessions. Misses the front end. Shiree back to Lawrence. Lawrence has it stripped away. That's her fifth turnover. Yes, the scrappers are coming from behind her, trying to reach from behind, and it's very loud to hear anybody call Wolf or anything like any of her uh, teammates. It is loud. It is a great atmosphere at Bank OZK Arena. If you're just joining us, it's hard to believe this is a two-point game. Farmington's been up by double digits. Chance for the lead here. Off the front of the iron. Rebound tracked down by Nashville. Long Carver rebound. still has it. They're going to call a jump ball here. It'll stay 
Oh, excuse me, this is going Farmington's way. Yes, going to pharmacy, uh, Farmington. Farmington just needs to break this person when they come down. Uh, try to get some rotation and maybe hit on the inside and find, find uh, Lawrence actually cutting through. She's bringing the ball up now. Lawrence very closely guarded, and they will call a foul that will bring it right in front of us here. Yes, and you can best believe, I think, uh, trying to see how many that is on Dean right now. That's three on Dean. That's, uh, underneath, Bashir's got it. Moved it. Got it. Part of the So back to a four-point game. Nashville. Oh, they lost it. Jenna Lawrence comes away with it. Yes, that was a good uh, tip there. Dean's all over her. And wow, they call a jump ball there. They do. And I think that they're letting them play. I, th I think any plays like that, they're not calling. They're just going to call like the obvious, you know, bumps. That was awfully quick. Yeah. Dean on the drive, the kick out. Carver to the corner. Carver closely guarded. Good look to Scoggins. Regains possession. Blocked underneath. Farmington fights for the rebound, That's and bad. they will come away with it. Marin Adams moving through the press. Now Lawrence. They're going to try to take some time off the clock. Work the clock here, I believe. Yeah, they're going to make sure they Shiree can get up a good shot. Off the mark. Out of bounds, Scrapperette's ball. So it's a four-point game, 3.46 left. Buckle up. You're watching the Centennial State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home to your first child and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring, for everything that matters most to you and your family. There's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau insurance. Real service, real people. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. We on that next level. Well, we are in for quite the finish here at Bank OZK Arena at the Hot Springs Convention Center in the Spa City. What a way to start the first of our 12 games of buzzer to buzzer coverage here at Arkansas PBS Sports. It's Farmington, 35 and 1. Their only loss out of state. They lost this championship game to Nashville a year ago against the Nashville Scrapperettes, 29 and 3. They have clawed back into this one and they turn it over there. Yeah, allow, allow one baseline and tried to. Transition, the oh. cover can't finish, but a foul there. Hard fall to the ground. That's going to be on Carver. Carver and Scoggins are four for 23 from the field. Typically, the Scrapperettes, two leading scorers as McCumber gets that one to fall. McCumber, a volleyball player. Six feet, all that size for Farmington. He makes one of the free throws there. So now it's a five-point lead for the Cardinals. Now wave off the basket. Give me a push on Marin Adams. Puts him up to eight, 18,000. Uh, 
shooting the one and one, two, two away from the double bonus. I'm curious to see it. I know they have uh, Scoggins here now shooting. I'm curious to see the next time down, uh, they came back through Dean and Lyle um, and their play. I'm curious to see when they come back down, if they'll go back through them again. Yeah, Caroline Dean 15, Kalen Lyle 14 in this game. Couple big free throws there. Three point game, 3 16 left. This is Adams who has 20 for Farmington. Leading all scores in this one. Yeah, she's been kind of silent here in the fourth quarter. Um, but she's not lacking for confidence, and she's, she's been doing a great job this whole game. Cardinals are happy to work the clock here. Shiree back to Lawrence, back to Shiree. Ten on the shot clock. Jenna Lawrence can try for three. Open off shot. the back oh, of the iron. The cover, the put back, not there. Rebound underneath, out of bounds. It's going to Scrapper X way. Well, Brad Johnson thought it was off Nashville. He was in the ref's ear over there. Remember that side of the 240 mark. So a three point game at the 230 mark. Goggins. Back to Dean. They send it around Lyle on the drive. Bounce pass to Scoggins. Baseline drive. They run into traffic and turn it over. Adams comes away with it for Farmington. And a foul is going to be called there on Caroline Dean. I think that's her fourth personal, I think. It is her fourth personal. Well, Nashville knocking at the door. They got it within two. They're now within three. They just have not been able to get that bucket. The tire take the lead. Adams knocks down the first. She is up to 21. She is 8 of 11 from the field. She's been having a great game. 5 11. And you know she's going to keep growing as Farmington's going to return even more size next year. Five-point game now. Shaylin Lyle on the drive, looking for help underneath. Gives it off. Now to the top of the key, Scoggins. Tries a deep three. She's got it! Kylie Scoggins capable of those big shots at the big moments. That was huge. Timeout called by Jenna Lawrence. Big shot, big shot. Oh, boy. Two-point game. Under two to play. Let's take another look here. Yes, yeah, a good rotation, open shot, knocked down for her. And I'm sure that that, that, that makes her feel good because, uh, because she hasn't been shooting that well this game, so to see it go through the basket will help out a lot for her. So a two-point game here in what is the first meeting since these two teams played for the state championship a year ago. And they've been on a collision course since. Two great sports communities for sure. Farmington and Nashville, and look at these fans here. Had a feeling, even when it felt like Farmington might pull away, the Nashville had another run in them, and they certainly did. Yeah, they, they, they like um, you said at the outbreak, this, this, uh, you said, Coach Dean said, this team does not get rattled. So, you know, that 13 point lead, or whatever it was, uh, at one point, wasn't a big deal to them because they knew what they could do. There we go, just inbounded to Lawrence. Off to Adams, back to Lawrence. Gets it across, knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Cardinals. For Shears is going to come in and replace McComber for Farmington. It's been a quiet afternoon for Zoe Bershears. Lawrence off to Moss. Shirey into Adams, swatted away by Lauren Causer. Here come the Scrapperettes in transition. Lyle, bounce pass underneath Carver. Kicks it out. Lyle, under 90 to play. Another three-point attempt. That one is no good. Rebound underneath by Carver. The offensive putback is there. It's a tie ball game. And the two young ladies we talked about having a little bit of trouble are the two that have come back here. And they will call a foul there. Call a foul. You saw Brad Johnson jump up. 
But you noted about uh, uh, Carver and Scoggins having some issues here, putting the ball in the hole, and they're they're the last two in these past few, few minutes to knock shots down for uh, to tie this game up. That's a great point. They've come up big here to tie this at 59. And so to a certain extent here, it becomes a free throw game down the stretch. Re Shiree at the line. Knocks down the first. The little engine that drives us, Coach Brad Johnson says. She's become a vocal leader for this Cardinals team, a basketball family. Her mom, the former Amber Nicholas, a great point guard for the Razorbacks, now the director of basketball operations. Knocks down both two huge free throws in that moment. Yes, she she, she was huge uh, with uh, Adams in the first half of Farmington. Um, she's been a little quiet, but. Down to one minute mark. Lyle kicks it out. A D3, a point attempt around the rim and out. Out of bounds, it's going Farmington's way. That was a yes. good look. That was a good look. That was a good look, just them in and out. So that was good rotation by Nashville. Um, good hand in the face for Farmington, like they like they were there to, um, to at least challenge that shot a little bit and put themselves in position. So 50 seconds now. Farmington up two. Full court pressure, knocked out of bounds. Yes, Farmington's going to have to handle this pressure. It's a little bit more intense here in this last minute, so they're going to have to handle this pressure and move the ball around uh, to get a good shot. Moss inbounds. Back to Moss. Off to Shiree. Up ahead, Adams. Farmington running time off the clock. Adams. Now Jenna Lawrence on the drive. Pretty move. Not there. Underneath for Shears. The putback's not there. Lawrence one more time, and she's got it. Jenna Lawrence putting Farmington up four with 23.5 to play. Yes, Nashville was rotating on those uh, uh, traps, and they happened to get a shot up and a good offensive rebound, and then that height just that height just got them. That's where Bershears and Farmington, and when the two of them are next to each other under the basket, what can you do? Yeah, yeah, you can't do anything. So let's talk about for the Scrapperettes here. You're down for 23.5 left. Probably need a quick shot here, right? You want to score quick, but you don't want to... You, you really don't want to look for an outside shot. You want to try to get something uh, maybe off the dribble penetration. You have to remember you're at eight fouls, so, you know, any bump, I mean, you're up there with the shot clock, uh, uh, stop for like a one and one, and then that gives you an opportunity to make two and then get into your press, which is what you're known for. Um, so, um, yes, you do want to get a quick shot, but it doesn't have to be too quick to where you don't take a quality shot. You want to really take a quality shot. Well, and you brought up a good point, too. You want to drive to the basket and try to draw some contact here, too. Yeah. 63-59. And I think uh, Farmington's going to take, they took the shields out, so they're going to try to go offense, defense, uh, so she won't foul out. Not playing the ball out of mouth, but that gives them the chance to push the ball up. Scoggins will move quickly. Under 20 to play now. Scoggins guarded by London. Scoggins working on Lawrence. Drives. The floater is there. Back to a two-point game with 12.2 and a quick timeout. 12 seconds. Good bench out there. Wow. So you look at Scoggins here, who is... Had a oh, tough a afternoon, game, yeah. but she knows exactly when to step up. She does, and, and like I said, hitting that three um, earlier, I think that helped her just see the ball go through the basket for her. I think it helped her out a great deal. And so now, if you're naturally, you got to foul, right? I mean, yes, you have to foul. Um, uh, you want to try to make sure maybe um, – I'm sure I know that they don't have the stats, but maybe try to foul the person you think who um, who may possibly miss the free throw and give you a chance to get down to try to score score again. Um, Time to try for the turnover first, though, right? I mean, you know, 18 turnovers by Farmington today. 
Farmington has uh, has had 18 uh, turnovers in this last 12 seconds. You know they like they've been running traps. They've been you know playing like straight uh, uh, man two. So you, um, maybe you want to try to make um, if if you're Farmington, don't try to overthink it. Um, just try to make sure you get a solid uh, uh, screen and just come down to the ball and make sure you, you, you can get a foul. You know, a good pass. And Farmington has one timeout left. Nashville has two. Here we go. 63-61 Farmington, 12 point two to play. Moss inbounding underneath, and they're going to have to call a timeout. Brad Johnson calls it from the bench. So that pressure there from Nashville. Yes, yes, that uh, the, uh, pressure, you know, um, and I and I think that uh, knowing that Coach Dean uh, has been putting pressure on all night, he didn't see them try to go too long because Nashville will run down that ball. Um, so you got to try to find a way to get your uh, – I would really try to look to get the shears open. She, she has the height. Um, you know, she's got good, good hands. She can turn over. I know she's had some turnovers tonight. Uh, but maybe try to quickly get her open and have someone, uh, you know, like shoot through the gap so maybe she can catch them. Uh, but they're going to have to foul her and, and um, as soon as the ball comes in anyway. So. Well, we see these coaches yelling over what is an electric crowd here at Bank OZK Arena. Fans starting to file in as well for this second game after us in the 4A boys game. And they're in for a treat for this finish. What a way to start here in Hot Springs. This has been a great game, exciting game. It's uh, been you, a great pace, hasn't it? Great pace. You, you could not have scripted this game any better than this. Marshall inbound again here. Here we go, final 12.2. Inbound it to Lawrence. Carver got her hands on it there and knocked it out of bounds. No, they, no, they will call it for the foul yeah, there. Yeah, they did call it for the foul. And they did. Get, for a second, she knocked it out on the baseline. Well, yeah, she she, she grabbed it, she put her hand yeah. out, and then Brashears tried to throw it off of her. All right, that sends Jenna Lawrence to the line. Lawrence, the future Razor, back six for 15 from the field, 14 points in this one, nine rebounds. I apologize, Farmington. I meant to say uh, Lawrence and not Brashears. Yeah. And converts. Oh, what a big free throw. This one even bigger. Try to make it a two possession game here. Lawrence rounding out what has been a superb high school career. Misses it. Nashville's got to move quick. 10 seconds. A deep three point attempt. Off the back of the iron, a rebound underneath McCumber. Farmington has it, and the foul. And now Farmington can feel it with 1.6 to go. Yes, that was that was that was a good shot by uh, Lyles. That was, that was good transition and a good shot. Just didn't happen to make it on that one. These young ladies have worked very hard tonight on both sides. And now Brad Johnson, you can see getting. I think everybody into this game off the bench. Yeah, he wants to celebrate these players and give these other ladies, ladies a chance to step on this court. Great job by Coach Johnson. Heads up there, hugs on the Farmington bench. Look at that Cardinal student section. Off the mark. The buzzer sounds, redemption for Farmington. A celebration for the Cardinals. They win the 4A state championship. What a wonderful game. This, this was a great game, great game. 65-61, Farmington rushes out to celebrate their second title in four years. This one, though, meaningful for that girl in particular. Jenna Lawrence capping what has been a superb high school career with a state championship in a Cardinals uniform. 65-61, the final 
We'll be back with our post-game action after this. You're watching the Centennial State Basketball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Support your PBS station and you can get Passport, giving you full seasons, early releases, special collections, and more. Download the PBS Video app or watch online. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Duke GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Trophies to be handed out here in the spot that he goes to the Cardinals. They have played in this game for four straight years, lost in an absolute heartbreaker. Last season, this was about redemption, they said, not revenge. They get it. And how about Farmington winning its second title? They shared that one back in 2020 with Star City in the COVID year. This one is all theirs. Plenty of tears for sure. It's been quite the scene here. And the MVP, Jenna Lawrence. And it's been a fantastic championship celebration. And we got the head coach joining us, Brad Johnson. Congratulations, coach. Holy cow, have you caught your breath after that? Basketball team and basketball program Nashville has, man. Um, kudos to Paul Dean and all his kids. I mean, we're right back in this spot last year. Very similar game, yeah. you know. I mean, it's just, it's just fun to watch. I love our kids. I love how they responded. And this game went exactly when you got two teams like that playing. That's what this game should be Looks like. Looks like you were going to pull away there. Yeah. They, get, they get within two. What are you telling your team in those tense moments? Well, we talked actually at halftime that they're too good of a basketball team. They're going to go on a run, you know. And you've got to weather that. You got to get through the emotions. We got to get the ball back in the spots that we wanted it and just calm down. We're going to win it on the back of defending. And we're going to win it on the back of trying to get defensive rebounds, not, get, you know, giving up second chance points. And we had to take care of the basketball. And so just to get back who we were, you know, take your breath. It's fine. The run here. Let's get it stopped. And let's finish it. 
Yeah, Coach, uh, great, great uh, win. <laughs> that was wonderful to watch. My mom's out of breath. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, just watching it go back and forth. Um, uh, what do you have to say about Miss Adams? I mean, she really. I, I can't hear you. Your mic's not working. Um, I wanted to ask uh, about Miss Adams. What do you think? She, like, 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 she did a wonderful job for you all tonight. I still can't hear you. Adams. Oh, Marin Adams. Yes. Holy yes, moly! I mean, that kid is a talented, talented sophomore, and she's done a lot for our program through the course of the year. You know, I told leading up to this, I did an interview, and I said the thing is, is Marin Adams going to be a kid that everybody in the state is going to talk about from Farmington um, at some point. Like her career is going to be big, and and she uh, she came out on the biggest stage and kind of showed what I we thought that she had in her all game long. Tremendous kid, works really hard, and man, she's a talented sophomore. We're glad to have her back two more years. And we'll talk to Jenna Lawrence in a sec, but just yeah. quickly, uh, storybook ending to what's been a fantastic career for her. Uh, oh, unbelievable! And listen, Jenna Lawrence is the epitome of what you want a high school girls basketball player to be. She's crazy talented. Her work ethic is off the charts, but she's a phenomenal leader in person. And that's what sometimes goes unnoticed. And, and I love that kid from the bottom of my heart. Um, you know, she's got big things coming. The state of Arkansas is going to love her as a Razorback. And we're certainly proud. She's a Lady Cardinal. Really, really proud of her. Well, congratulations Thank to you. you. I yeah, appreciate it. Congratulations. You. Thank you. Farmington with the championship. Now take a look at our final stats. It was uh, quite the finish here. 65-61 Farmington. Hey, to Nashville's credit, they came back in. They had turnover trouble early. They were shooting poorly, but they got back in it. And then down the stretch, the MVP of this one, Jenna Lawrence, who hops on with us now, the future Razorback. Congratulations. Uh, I can't imagine what this trophy means to you. Coach had told us oh, you took that ending difficult last year. I mean, there were weeks of mourning, you said. You took it personally for the redemption. How's it feel? It's just, it feels so good. I mean, I'm just like, ugh, I cannot believe this is happening. Like, last year, the way we went out, it was just hard. I was heartbroken. So just to come out here and to win this trophy, this is my first trophy, to win this and to win on my last game, it just means the world to me and my teammates and the community and Coach Johnson. Like, I'm just... How about the way your team stuck together down the stretch, mm -hmm. too? Mm -hmm. That got really tense for a yeah. moment. Yeah, uh, at halftime, I mean, we were up by, like, what, 17? Uh, we came in there, and we weren't cheering. We weren't celebrating or nothing. We, uh, me and Reese were like, this, is, this game ain't over. Like, Nashville has their runs, and they're about to make a run on us, and yeah. we better be prepared. So sure enough, they did, and they even tied the game. So we were like, we need to keep our composure, and we need to do what we need to do. You know, Coach Eastman's a better team. We are, always, in every yeah. case scenario. So we just got to go out there, and we got to have that mindset. And we did, and how we moved. The MVP, Jenna Lawrence, congratulations to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go celebrate with your team right there. Oh, I will. <laughs> we'll take that from you. Hey, one final thought. Coach Amon Love, we appreciate you joining us. That was, as, that was as much fun as you'll have calling a game, oh, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I really, really, really in, uh, uh, enjoyed it. And I was, uh, I, was, I was telling you, unless you're just going to be those t other two coaches over there, this, this, this would be a great spot to be <laughs> Next in. Next spot to uh, be. Third best enjoy. spot. Yeah, hey, you see the two teams warming up. Our next game coming up here on Arkansas PBS Sports. Little Rock Christian, all that talent taking on Blyville for what should be another great game here in the Spa City. If game one was any indication, we're in for a great weekend. Don't go anywhere. The 4A Boys Championship is coming up next. Meantime, for now, for Amon Love and Kyle Deckelbaum, thanks so much for joining us. 4A Boys Championship is coming up next. You're watching the Centennial State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. <laughs>